Hey everyone, it's Kenji again. Uh, I'm gonna make some lunch. So, I just finished making this um, chicken stock, which is actually, well, it's going on the stove, but I have uh, some chicken, I took the uh, the chicken tenders and some chicken thigh out of there, um, which uh, I'm gonna now make into uh, the chicken for this uh, chicken uh, peanut noodle dish that I'm making. So, a couple slices of ginger I got, here's a little bit of leek. You don't really need to do this, um, I'm just gonna throw them in there though. Um, and then the broth is actually coming, uh, sorry, the water is coming to a boil right now. Um, you can put the chicken in while it's still cold. So I got a chicken thigh and just a couple of those chicken tenders in there. Oh, this pan is cool, by the way. Um, I don't even remember where I got it. It's a prototype somebody sent me once, but it's got this aluminum, um, this sort of ridged aluminum plate on the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and what that does is it actually increases the surface area on the bottom of the pan. Aluminum is a very good conductor, by the way. It increases the surface area on the bottom of the pan uh, so that it actually extracts more, um, it's able to get more heat from the uh, burner and less heat goes off into the air. Um, so it very efficiently boils things. I don't know why this thing hasn't come to market yet. Somebody, somebody demoed it for me once a long time ago. Um, all right, so what else is going in there? Um, we'll do some, oh, sorry, so this dish, when I was a student, um, in the summers, we used to have, uh, I used to work in a biology lab uh, in Cambridge, and by the biology lab was a bunch of food trucks, um, and there was one called Gooseberries, which was um, a Chinese food truck, uh, and m most of the food was not very good, but my lunch probably three days a week was their sesame um, or peanut noodle salad, which is cold noodles um, in a peanut sauce with chicken and scallions and cilantro and cucumbers. So this is sort of my homage to that. Um, I'm cutting the scallion in half and then I'm very, very thinly slicing it at a sharp, sharp bias like this. You see, you don't really have to do it that thin or sharp. It doesn't really matter. Cut them, cut them into whatever size pieces you want. Um, if you have a sharp knife, uh, and you have the skills or the patience to do it that way, um, you can do it. Oh, some people have asked me about the claw grip, you know, the whole holding your knife like this and keeping your knife perpendicular. Uh, so I do that sometimes depending on what I'm cutting. Like if I'm cutting a bunch of like, so I'll do that for this, for example, for this cilantro. I'll pick it up like this, keep my thumb tucked back there and my knife right against my knuckles. And then I kind of go like that. And that's sort of the classic claw grip. Sometimes people have seen me doing it as sort of a half claw, so which is, which is, um, no, on this guy, and I guess I do this sort of classic claw grip too also. So like that. Um, when I do this cucumber, I'll show you what my sort of half claw grip is. Um, I think some people pointed me towards uh, a video, um, Adam Ragusi, I think that's how you say his name. I don't know, but um, I haven't watched much of his stuff, but I've seen a couple of them. Um, tend to like him. He had a video about um, whether you should use the claw grip or not, which I'll link to uh, somewhere, let's say, here. Um, <clears throat> I'll link to it. Um, and his argument is that you don't really need to use the claw if your goal is not to be a professional chef. Um, and I actually kind of agree with that. It's like, if, you're do if you've never used the claw and you're used to just kind of, you know, holding your food like this and being very slow and deliberate about your cuts, um, there's no reason to switch over to the claw unless you really have a desire to get faster and faster and faster. So, you know, you are gonna reach an upper limit of how fast you can safely cut when your thumb is sticking out like that and you're holding your food like this. Um, and the, the whole point of the claw, oh, you see how fast that came to a boil? We're gonna bring it down to a little simmer. The whole point of the claw grip is that it lets you cut really fast, you know, like, very, very, very fast like that, without any danger of cutting your fingertips off because everything's kind of tucked behind. So your knuckle, it, it, your knife kind of rides on your knuckle like that. Um, can you see that? Here, I'll, I'll try and help you see it. So your knife kind of rides on your knuckles like that. So no real danger of cutting yourself if you do that. But, um, you know, if, if, you, if you hold it like this, if you hold your food like that, you can cut off your thumb tip uh, or your fingertips. But the thing is, you know, if, if your goal is not to cut really fast, then then who really cares, right? Um, so I agree with him on that. I'm gonna just kind of fillet this little jalapeno nub that I had. You can use serrano or, or no chili at all. Um, but here, you know, so you, so you take out the seeds and the core, um, and then you'll end up with this. And do a little julienne. Oh, I'll show you a little trick with these scallions now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a little bowl. This spoon is here because my drawer um, hinges are broken, by the way. <clears throat> I think I've mentioned that before. Get some ice. All right, 
some water. <clears throat> and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put those scallions um, into this ice water. Actually, I'll throw the peppers in there too, just for hell of it, because they're all kind of bunched up together right now. Um, I'm gonna put those scallions into this ice water. And what that does is it'll cause some of the cells in there to um, absorb extra moisture. And when that happens, um, it's sort of like a bimetal strip on a, on, a, um, on a thermostat where one side expands faster than the other. So what happens is that one, side of, one part of the scallion absorbs more water than the other part, and it ends up curling. So it turns the scallions into these nice, pretty curls um, that look great as a garnish. <clears throat> so if you've ever wondered how they do that, do that at restaurants, that's, that's how they do it ice water um, and then here's the cucumber so the cucumber first I'm gonna cut off one side like this to make a nice flat surface then I'm gonna cut it into thin planks and so okay so here you can see I'm not really doing the claw grip I'm kind of my thumbs out here um, but still I have one finger with the knuckle leading and that's where the that's where the knife is kind of stopped up again so there's no real risk that I'm gonna um, cut my fingertips off doing this um, so we've made our little planks. Now we can stack them up. Don't have to be perfect, but you want them aligned like that. And then, um, and again, I'm doing this kind of half claw grip. Um, then you cut it into Julianne. Um, it's kind of quick and dirty, Julianne. If I was um, if I wanted to be a little bit neater and fancier, um, I would seed the cucumbers. I would probably do the initial cuts on a mandolin so that they're all perfectly um, the right thickness, you know? Um, and then I would very, very carefully stack them and slice them. But, you know, again, I never do that kind of stuff when I'm cooking for myself at home. Um, and frankly, like I've, you know, long gone are the days where I used to practice my knife skills for eight hours a day. Um, and so my knife skills are probably, I'm, I'm sure there are many of you out there who are like, oh my God, Kenji's got terrible knife skills. Um, and if you feel that way, I don't care. Um, leave it in the comments if you want, I don't really care. Um, because I'm not out to impress anyone except, except myself, I guess. Maybe my family a little bit. All right, so we got our cucumbers. We got our scallions, we got some cilantro here. That's what's gonna be the base for our noodle dish. <clears throat> Great big bowl to toss it in. Put all that in here. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna get a smaller bowl to make the sauce. So the sauce, sauce. Get a fork. Um, so you can use, you know, so this is sort of loosely based on a Shanghai style um, sesame noodle. Um, so with sesame noodles, you would take a roasted sesame paste and you take um, a fresh chili oil uh, and that's sort of the basis of your sauce. Um, with, and you garnish with scallions, maybe cucumber. Um, I'm just using peanut butter, extra chunky, a little knob of it here, and a few tablespoons. Then we're gonna get some hot water. Um, actually, you know what I'll, I'll use is a, uh, Use some of this, some of the water from here. Um, the chicken is not cooked all the way through, but the water is certainly hot enough that it's not, um, uh, it's safe to use in your sauce. There's nothing living in that water right now. So a couple tablespoons of that water too. And we'll kind of dilute our peanut butter. So if you do have, um, if you don't want to do peanut butter, if you want this to be a slightly more traditional thing, you can use uh, roasted sesame paste, Chinese roasted sesame paste, or you can even use um, tahini. And that tastes perfectly fine. So we've got our peanuts in here. I'm gonna grab some chili oil. This is homemade chili oil. You can use store-bought chili oil if you want. Um, very easy to make chili oil. Like the simplest kind, all you take is some uh, dried chilies, Toast them, chop them, um, or you can get them already pre-chopped, you know, like uh, chili powder. Um, heat up some oil on the stove and pour it over the chilies and let it infuse. Um, and then if you want, you know, beyond that, there's all different kinds of styles of chili oil you can make. Um, again, I'll cook to, uh, I'll link to um, Chinese Cooking Demystified, which has some chili oil recipes. Um, this one, I believe, has some garlic and ginger, sesame, uh, star anise. Uh, what else is in here? Probably a little salt and sugar. Maybe a little citron peppercorn, I can't remember. Let's, let's smell it. 
Yeah, for sure there's Sichuan peppercorn in there. All right, mix that into here. I'll do a video on chili oil at some point. And then I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna do a little vinegar, black vinegar, not Worcestershire sauce, uh, black vinegar and soy sauce. Light soy sauce I'm using right here. You can use dark, you can use shoyu, whatever you want. You can use no soy sauce. Black vinegar, um, so you can use black vinegar, you can use ching kang vinegar. Um, if you don't have those, the closest Western thing in a Western supermarket would probably be balsamic vinegar. Um, but you know, you can also use any kind of vinegar you want, red wine, apple cider doesn't really matter as long as it's got that acidity it's going to taste good all right so that's our sauce right there could use a little more heat actually I'm gonna I'm gonna add a quick little splash of sambal all right so now I think our chicken is probably cooked through Let me give it a little quick skim. So in this one, you do want to skim off the um, the scum. Skim off the scum um, because we're going to be cooking our noodles directly in this water. Let me see how's that how's that chicken doing. Uh, I don't know where my tongs are. Let me grab some. I'll grab another fork. I'm just going to rip it open to see how it's doing. It is looking done. All right. You just want it to be barely cooked through, you know, up to like 155 degrees or so is fine. 155, if you wanna go higher, that's fine. Take that out, let's get our, get all this stuff out. Okay. I'm gonna top it up with a little bit more hot water. Now, I'm using uh, these, where are they? These Shanghai style uh, Chinese noodles. Um, you can use any kind of noodles you want, really. Um, you can use egg noodles. Uh, if you wanna use, if all you have access to is Western pasta, one nice trick um, to give uh, Western style pasta, a sort of alkaline noodle texture, that sort of chewy, bouncy texture that um, certain types of Chinese noodles have, is to add a little bit of baking soda to the water that you're boiling them in. So maybe about a quarter teaspoon or so per, mm, for every two cups, like a half, half teaspoon per quart of baking soda to the water and boil your pasta in it. So spaghetti, angel hair, whatever you want. Um, and it'll get that sort of yellow color and um, the bouncy texture of a good Chinese um, alkaline noodle. But I'm using these fresh noodles. Um, I'm only going to cook like half of these right now because that's all we need. Uh, that's a good amount. The rest of these I'll save for later. All right. Now we just got to wait for that water to come to a boil. Oh, you know what else we can add in here? Oh, it is at a boil. All right, here we go. Quick. Get the noodles in there. A little stir to make sure that they're not clumping together. Um, what I'm going to add to my sauce is a tiny little dash of uh, MSG. Maybe a, it's like a quarter teaspoon or so. You don't have to use MSG, of course as I always say, but um, in my family, we don't mind it. Um, you know, I'm also not gonna tell you that you aren't sensitive to MSG if you think you are. Because who am I to say what you are and are not sensitive to? All right. So those noodles are done. Um, now I'm gonna take a little splash of the pasta water and add it to my sauce. Um, this pasta water, it actually, actually, you know what? I'm gonna add a little bit to my chicken stock too. You know, it's, it's got a little bit of flavor already in there from the chicken that I boiled in it. 
Um, plus it has some of that starchiness and that's gonna help the, um, the noodles pick up the sauce just as you would with an Italian pasta. Um, so I'm gonna drain them, hit them with some cold water, stop the cooking. Um, if I was trying to do this like a super traditional way or you know whatever, some, some, I'm sure someone's gonna call me out in the comments for this, but um, if I wa really wanted to do this like the ideal way, I think I, what I would do is I would drain them and then I would lay them out on a sheet tray um, and let them air dry a little bit uh, rather than shocking them like this, but um, I really don't care. Um, this is the fast, fast, easy, dirty way. All right, warm noodles into the bowl they go. Let's get our chicken. I'm gonna have to clean that up later. Let's get our sauce in here. Chicken, I'm gonna use a couple forks to pull it apart. Get rid of that little excess knob of fat here. From the thick chicken thigh. Shabu, sit. Oh, almost. She catches it. Well, you've seen she catches it maybe 30% of the time. Shabu is a, um, for those who are asking, Shabu is a mutt. She was a, a rescue street dog. Um, has had many babies in her life apparently. Uh, but she was, you know, she we had her tested and she was like something like 25% rat terrier, I think. And then everything else is uh, just some undecipherable mix of all different types of breeds. Um, she's a sweet dog. She was not a sweet dog when we first got her. She was really difficult, would not go near anybody except for me, um, including my wife, which was very difficult for her. Um, she was also very poorly behaved, would bark at people, snap at people. Um, but now she's a now she's a big sweetheart. All it takes is some love. Well, love and, love and a lot of training. She also loves chasing animals. Um, I once caught her with a, a live swallow. Um, she, swallowing a swallow. A swallow was like halfway down her throat. She brought it, uh, brought it into the house like that. Wasn't too fun. All right, chicken is shredded. Into the sauce it goes. And now let's look at our pretty little scallion bits. See, so you see how nice and, nice and curly they kind of become? Pretty, right? All right, those can go right in there. Don't want the ice going in. It's okay if you get a little extra water in there because those noodles are gonna, as they cool, that sauce kind of thickens up a little. All right. All right, now let's just toss. Sorry about that, I think my battery, uh, GoPro ran out of batteries, but I don't know how far I got. I hope I didn't miss too much. Um, uh, basically, I just put it all together and uh, I'm tossing it now. And you see as, as the sauce, the sauce was pretty watery when I put it in, but now you see as it cools and as it mixes with the noodles, um, it really sticks to the surface of the noodles and it comes out just the right texture. So you want the noodles to be kind of loose um, not clumpy, um, and to get to that loose stage, um, loose, dry, dry but loose, you get there by making it too wet to begin with. Let me give these a taste. Mmm. Delicious, because you use a little bit more salt. At least are you still hungry? A little more salt and a little more vinegar.
That was excellent. All right. Over, fill the bowl. And let's add a final little drizzle. I always like to add a little drizzle of chili oil at the end. There we go. This, I promise you, well, I haven't had gooseberries in years. I don't know if it even still exists. Probably not, maybe it does. Um, that whole area has changed. But this, I promise you, is better than anything gooseberries ever so served. And it's so easy. Delicious, look at this. Hmm. I could eat a lot of that. All right. I will see you next time.